nice to meet you guys. Thank you. So for season two, how did you go about kind of evolving the characters, but also not having them evolve and grow too much because that's where the comedy is? <laughs> I mean, it was nice that season one really got to establish their personalities, and we have such an amazing core group of actors voicing them um, that, you know, they really just kind of like got to thrive and run free as their, you know, as their own um, this season. But fortunately, they are very flawed um, in extremely entertaining ways. So we get to see all of those dynamics kind of grow and further. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We just get to kind of up the world building too of Fort Gator, where it can go. Just you know, just there. You know, with that we we had sort of only seven episodes the first time, and now we have ten. And you know, it just gave us the space to create new characters, new situations that we you know. Yeah, especially given the space to grow. Why did you guys go about doing this as like a 20 minute compared to like a seven minute that like a lot of adult swim shows are like? I mean, it just, it felt like the hardest thing to do. And we really wanted to do it, like to, to make a half hour animated show. To me, I'd made a lot of TV shows was like the holy grail of seeing like the hardest thing to pull off. It's the, everything about it that, you know, really creating characters that can really sustain the time, mm -hmm. the stories, the writing. Um, yeah, it just seemed like super hard and we liked that. <laughs> we also really wanted to give that, you know, to these like three female characters, you know, that are really like the driving force of the show, you know, just like that time a lot really like allows them to all be like actual people. Yeah. Uh, Pete too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pete's a person in he a way. <laughs> yeah. He, he is an adult baby. Yeah. Um, how did you? My favorite episode so far of season two is when Fantasy is a sex education <laughs> teacher. Yes. And there is a joke about sexual positions that is so funny <laughs> to me that I'm like, okay. Only a woman could have written this <laughs> because no one actually likes this position. <laughs> how did you guys kind of go about that? And even your writing style and writing in a pair, how do you go about that? I mean, that just was really hit close to home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just real. You know, that is just real. And it's about time. <laughs> it's about time we confronted that because, like, yeah, it's it's a bad idea for anybody. Yeah. And we just felt like, an, like we hadn't seen, like, it was very interesting to us to do a sex ed kind of episode. We have a few different episodes that deal with girls and girls' sexuality. Mm -hmm. And, um... You know, it just felt like we wanted to give it a, like a huge space and the idea to have your mother become your sex ed teacher is like the most horrific scenario you could come up with and to put them in that just, I don't know, it's one of my favorite episodes mm -hmm. of the whole season. It's really, yeah, I, I hadn't quite seen that before. Yeah. Speaking of the show being so outlandish, um, is that one of the reasons you said it in Florida? Because it would make sense that things like this could happen in Florida. Yeah, I mean, I'm from Florida. I'm from like Florida man's Florida. Um, you know, that's kind of, that's the Florida that's near and dear to my heart, just where, you know, like you make terrible decisions. Um, you know, the rest of the, you know, world doesn't care um, and isn't watching or affected, you know, and is judging you um, if they do find out. Um, that's that's kind of the Florida I love, you know, so um, it definitely is a landscape of possibility, um, particularly for um, horrible. Yeah, ideas. and when we first thought like, oh, she's a woman who's come back and, you know, I remember the executives were like, do people know about it? Is this something she keeps secret? And we were like, no, it's in Florida and no one cares. <laughs> Nobody, cares. Nobody <laughs> cares that she's a reanimated corpse. So I'd be like, so what? Like. You know, I, it's like the least interesting thing that's happening there. You know? Yeah. What do you think attracts people to adult animation? Is it the being able to be more outlandish instead if it was live action? Is it a bit of nostalgia for that form? Why do you think people are attracted to adult animation? I mean, I just think it's an amazing artistic medium, you know, and that it can really fit uh, any any genre like or type of story um, also. But just in terms of comedy, you know, like I, I think definitely it allows like a level, you know, a hyperbolic level of mm -hmm. storytelling and extremity where, you know, like, you know, people can, you know, die and return. Um, and, you know, you don't have to worry about sort of like 
budget, you know, production considerations, you know, when you want, um, you know, this thing to blow up, you know, or this sinkhole to open, um, you know, in ways that, that would be a nightmare, you know, for a, a practical shoot. And, and this is, can be so imaginative. Yeah. Like, you don't, you're not, like, we have no constraints, even with our creativity, and, and I think also it's, it's a comedy, and I think, like, live action comedy is, like, usually like a half hour drama with four jokes in it. And I think like we try to have like a lot of JPMs, jokes per minute. <laughs> no, right, yeah, right. And um, yeah, I think that's another thing people like about mm -hmm. it. Yes. If we're in a fantasy world, if um, you were to cast a live action fantasy mm -hmm. in Annie, who would you consider casting? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's hard to like get outside of the voice actor. Yes, you know, yeah. because he so is much. Joe Firestone. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine. We'd have to put Joe in a like time machine and make her Annie's yeah. age. Yeah, I think we'd have to do that. So I think that's yeah. what we'd have to do. It's awesome that you stay so true to them. <laughs> and what would you say is kind of what you're lo most looking forward to to people to see in season two? Mm. I mean, I feel like. There's just so much more now that you know the characters there and you see them in all these new situations. Like, I, I just hope people can enjoy it more because you're not like, wait, what's happening? Yeah. Our, our premise takes like two hours to, to, to explain to somebody. Like, yeah. now you're in, like, you can just like really enjoy the show. And I, we, I think our, we actually really, the animation style and all that, we, we really worked on it too. A lot, a lot of the first season was done during the pandemic, and I feel like the show looks better and uh, I'm excited for people to see that as well. Yeah, you can enjoy it on so many levels, you know, like just like if you're really stoned, you know, and you want to like have it on mute, you know, <laughs> like it's it's just like it looks so cool and funny, you know, if you're, um, you know, really like delving into the world, like you can just look in the background and see all of like these little hidden gem jokes, you know, that, that we kind of try to like pack into every single scenario. Um, so it's really something that no matter how you're feeling, uh, you know, what what sort of level of attention span you'd like to give it, like, it's going to entertain you. I appreciate that, because <laughs> I love a good work background show, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I need to be able to multitask, and that's what I love about the show, that I can yes. be engaged, and I still get it, because everything was explained in the opening credits. I love so. it. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking oh, the time to talk to me. Yeah. This was